First World Order Radio, finally, finally, we are on the air. No doubt. All right, all right. There's always going to be somebody in the building on First World Order Radio. We get on into some of that order consciousness tonight. First World Order Radio every Wednesday, 8 p.m. We got to talk about what is taking place on the planet. There's always going to be somebody in the building on First World Order Radio. First, we need to let you know we're going to be doing more shows, giving out more information on Wednesdays. Wednesday is 8 o'clock. We are now going to make this is the hottest day of the week. Proceeding in others in time, order, and importance. The most prominent parts, voices, or instruments. Earthly state of human concerns in existence. An indefinite multitude, quantity, or distance. System regulates to bring about specifics in the group based on value and natural characteristics. Current radiates electromagnetistics of sound through the air, same as your thoughts transmits it. Proceed in others in time, order, importance. The most prominent parts, voices, or instruments. Earthly state of human concerns in existence. An indefinite multitude, quantity, or distance. System regulates to bring about specifics in the group based on value and natural characteristics. Current radiates electromagnetistics of sound through the air, same as your thoughts transmits it. You need to understand how magical this, uh, something like this every Wednesday can become. So you need to start uh, getting your calendar right, get your schedule, your schedule right. You need to know our intention straight out. All right, so, I mean, these clues are given throughout the various languages was to piece the puzzle of this ancient history school back together again. And what we plan on doing, both of us, is bringing y'all some surefire dynamite. We're going to take this level up a notch. We're going to have stuff to do here. This is not just going to be about philosophies and theories and shit that works. Greetings once again. We're back with Dr. Aline El Bay's show. And tonight's discussion is going to be on earth changes. Basically, is it real or is it memorex? In other words, is this natural or is it man-made? Um, you just finished hearing some clips from various shows, um, from the History Channel, from... Um, the former governor, um, Ventura, he was stating, as you heard, um, that does the harp have the ability in order to cause not just weather manipulation, but also earthquakes and hurricanes. Dr. Nick, Nick Baggage, who wrote the book, Angel Don't Play This Harp, Stated it possibly could Now We won't go into So much of the conspiracy theories um, But we do know that They are dropping chemtrails This is obvious Alright They've been dropping chemtrails on us Ever since the mid 90's Now when you go and do your research On the chemtrails You will find that it has aluminum And barium As well as bacterial spores in the chemtrails. Now, when you hold a piece of aluminum up to the sun, what does it do? It reflects. That is one of the reasons why the chemtrails are being layered in the skies, is to attempt to reflect the onslaught of the solar flares that will and are bombarding bombarding the planet Earth. That's one aspect. The chemtrails is also utilized, and how you know this is because of the strange cloud formations in the sky, which is like waves or rippling effects. When you see these clouds or chemtrails 
because um, what happens is that sometimes when the chemtrails are dropped, they spread out and form what is called a chem dome. All right, now we haven't been seeing them here lately. All right, at least in the portion of the country in which that I'm in, which is in um, the southeast, eastern seaboard, North Carolina. Um, however, I've gone to Mexico, seen chemtrails. I've gone to Canada and seen chemtrails. I've gone to London, which is England, and seen chemtrails. I got invited to go to Germany, and the brothers there told me that they've seen chemtrails there. So the chemtrails is something in which that is being produced worldwide. Now, we played a tape last week, or audio last week, in which that Ronald Reagan was calling for Star Wars Defense Program in which that they made it seem as if it was aliens would be coming from outer space, which we do not deny, but they're not necessarily coming from outer space. They're all beings in the planet Earth. If you get um, Dr. York's book, Shambhala and Agatha, um, there are cities in the planet Earth. Um, Dr. Deborah Bliss speaks about this. Brother Bobby Hammett, Phil Valentine, many others of metaphysical masters have spoken about beings or in the planet Earth. All right? Um, these particular beings, which I won't get into um, because I'm not here to spook anyone out, just deal with the facts. However, there are aircrafts in which that um, come from in the earth and not just from outer space, all right? It was assumed by the government at one time that they came from inside, excuse me, from outer space, but they also found out that they have stations inside of the planet Earth also and that they have been there for millions of years. So, this is something else in which that has to be examined when it comes to this um, so-called conspiracy theory about what is actually taking place on planet Earth. All right, according to many, um, we are the byproduct of 22 different alien beings. This is what make up the human composition. And that supposedly there's many as 52 different species of extraterrestrials on planet Earth. Now, for those that know my information, you know that I don't get too much into this because I'm more concerned about the inward journey and how to raise the power within than so much of the focus outward. However, the inward journey reflects the outward journey. So, therefore, we have to speak on this um, matter at times, not for it to be the primary objective, because it is not. The primary objective is for you to awaken up to your God and Godhood, period. All right? If there were beings coming from outer space, coming down to get us, they're not, they would not be wanting to get a sack of shit. They would want to get a radiant being, a being of light, one that can shine, one that shows forth brilliance, knowledge, enlightenment. Hence the reason for all of these particular terms and how they all connect to shining, the light. So that's whom they would pick up if this was the case. All right? So regardless on what you um, think about UFOs, IFOs, um, the purpose, mission for you is to illuminate yourself. All right? Now, it is said that the 
Assyrian beings, which you are descended from according to Dogon mythology um, or stories according to the Amazulu people and their mythology, um, or mythology has some type or some truth to it, um, some origin or derivative. So don't let me throw you off by saying mythology. Now, Kuda Mutua, who is a South African shaman, he is um, still alive, and he speaks on the reptilian agenda, if you ever have his um, information, documentation, um, in which that David Icke um, actually um, interviewed him on several occasions. And he speaks about... Um, people or beings being able to transform their bodies into ships. All right, called a makaba, a murkaba, a murkaba. Um, this is similar to what is mentioned within the Bible in um, the books of Kings, where it speaks about Elijah being taken up on a flaming chariot. The word flaming chariot is in Hebrew makaba. Now, the makaba or murkaba um, is actually a derivative of of Metuneta, mer means light or love, all right? Um, ka, spirit, ba, soul, all right? So the makaba is activated on the principle of love. Um, of course, when you do the frequencies, uh, for those who's into the science of frequencies, that comes up to 528, all right? So particular frequencies, which this is all part of the same heart, um, heart um, program dealing that it deals, you know, that it deals with frequencies. Um, we have to get into that science also. But there's various frequencies in which that you can use, whether it's crystals, magnets, iodots, um, diodes, um, particular platinum pieces, gold, silver, so forth and so on, all right, um, can be used to increase frequencies, your vibratory rate, and that is what is going to be needed for the communication because the harp system, being that it shoots into the ionosphere, has a tendency of disrupting the communication between you and your ancestors because it heats up the ionosphere, all right? And by heating it up, uh, what it's doing is making those particles of aluminum to spread further out. And in the process of trying to shield the planet because the earth no longer has an ozone layer since the 1970s, in which that we spoke about this before, in which that they blame um, the ozone layer depletion on black people. What's that black people? Moors. They blame this on you, on us, because they claim that our parents in the 70s um, was walking around with aerosol cans, and inside the aerosol cans of the Afro sheen was monofluorocarbons, in which that supposedly went up into the atmosphere and depleted the ozone layer. Now, of course, if you want to believe that ridiculous story, then be my guest. But they're still teaching this shit to my children today. I went over to my brother's house and. Our nephews was talking about this information that they are still teaching them. And I'm like, damn, they still teaching that? They taught us that. Well, what caused the depletion of the ozone layer on planet Earth is the solar winds, the solar plasma bombarding the planet Earth, which is solar flares, CMEs, corona mass ejections, whatever term that you want to refer to it as, in which that depleted the ozone so that we can receive during this particular galactical alignment, whether it's going to happen between October the 28th, 2011, to December the 21st, 2012, all right, um, we know that the alignment is taking place, period. All right, so I don't care which calendar was on or off, it doesn't matter. We're talking about galactical alignment with Alcyon, which is the central sun, we will be aligning with our solar system, planet Earth, and we will receive for the first time in 25,000 years of history, energy, 
from the central sun, from this galaxy, Milky Way galaxy. Because at one time we sat on the outer armband, now we're moving further in, closer to Alcyon, which is in the Pleiades. It is our central sun, as I stated. And we're making a quantum leap. We're moving from a third dimension as we go on the other side of the dark rift, fourth dimension, and then on the outside armband of the photon belt, which actually is the inner armband, going more towards the Alcyon, we're going to go into the fifth dimension. All right, so we're making a quantum leap, and the third-dimensional beings, these reptilians, all right, um, and I'm not saying that they're reptilians as far as David Icke is saying, all right, um, but I'm saying reptilian as far as in the reptilian portion of the brain. And reptilian portion of the brain controls the first and second chakras, which deals with sex, greed, lust, envy, jealousy, um, particularly those lower emotions, Fight, flight, fright, all right, panic, fear. Um, this is where these reptilian beings want your mind state at, is in a state of fear, so that they can feed off of it, just like in the movie or the cartoon Monster, Inc., just like in the movie Matrix, when Morpheus holds up a battery to Neo and tells Neo, Neo, this is all we are to them. And he shows them the Duracell battery. In other words, we're energy supply. So every time we release fear from all of this fear tactics and what that they are producing, whether it's on what appears to be natural disasters, of course it would be natural if it wasn't an influence. But things are being influenced. If I was not seeing chemtrails, then it would be a different story. If I was not, um, um, if we did not know about the HARP system, about them having weather modification weaponry over the planet, there's about 20 of them in which that has been um, now documented throughout the various countries, then that would be something in which that this would be no issue about if they didn't have the technology, if it was not possible for them to do, um, to produce hurricanes and earthquakes and other, what would have appear to be natural disasters. We wouldn't even have this discussion. There would be nothing to talk about. But because they have these things and we have seen it um, and we have experienced it, then this is something which that we have to discuss. You know, we have to really get into it as far as um, what's going on. Because some of it is... Um, Earth changes because of the things in which that the planet Earth is going through, as I just finished stating. Um, the Earth is being bombarded by super and mega flares, what is called solar flares, um, activities from the sunspots from off the sun, which if you took a tetrahedron, uh, which is a six-pointed star configuration, and overlaid it on the sun, um, you would see an upper swelling of energy at 19 degrees. And you can do that on every single planet or object in this solar system. All right, now this correlates to the fact that in the Holy Quran it says over it is 19. And this is what this is actually referring to. That is the code there. And then, of course, the Holy Quran is broken down into the number 19. The Holy Quran itself is an astrological book. The word holy means sun, which is Ra. Quran means chronicle, time cycle. So Holy Quran means a sun cycle. The word Holy Bible means sun book or sun pages. Helios Biblios, where Helios means sun, which is from Ra, Heru. Biblios come from the word papyrus or paper Ra. Metuneta. So Ra Papa Ra. So Ra Papa Ra, which is an extension of or a portion of what is called coming forth by day and or the Perhem Heru, um, Heru um, text, um, which is misnomer, the Book of the Dead. Um, a portion of it is called the rise and evolution of Ra. And that is what the Bible is a summary of. And 73% of the Holy Quran comes from the Bible. So therefore, that's the essence of that book also along with the um, Apocrypha, um, the 
the lost books of the Bible, scan books of Eden, as well as the Zoroastrian texts. The Advent of Vesta. So those um, particular books is what makes up this information in which that we are talking about as far as you going back into those books and it's speaking about in the last days there would be earthquakes, different things like that. Of course, you can go to Matthew, the 24th chapter, if you want to read more about it, or to the book of Revelation. So these things, supposedly in the last days, in other words, as you move towards this last day, don't mean the end of the world, but it does mean a transition into a new heaven and a new earth. That's what it does mean. All right? So the old heaven and the old earth is passed away. But what does that mean? It means that the third dimension will be no more. We will now be moved into the fifth dimension. We will be moved from Homo sapiens sapiens to becoming Homo Christos, which means the heroes of this planet. In other words, um, beings in which that emits light, energy beings. We'll be dealing more with energy, natural energy. This is where we're moving towards. This is why people are picking up to learn Qigong, Tai Chi, Reiki, Pranic Healing, all of the energy modalities or light modality systems is now being picked up by hundreds and thousands, millions of people across the world, close to, across the globe. And this is what is going on. People coming back into the real science of self and what these scriptures actually is trying to convey. Because if our minds was one, then our will will be able to manipulate the conditions on this planet. No harp, no chemtrails, or nothing else will even matter because the technology is never stronger than the collective minds of the people. All right? You heard that they say that the harp um, is now up to 1 billion watts. You know? Um, this is where they're trying to move towards. But the energy which that is released from the body which are the electrons in which that goes up into the atmosphere and what is called the astral plane, the dream world, which is the ionosphere, which is one of the first stations um, upon being released from the physical body. That energy is the collectiveness of our ancestors that have past formed. And so by them shooting that beam up into the sky, it is an attempt to um, disrupt um, them as well as also disrupt our communication. So this is why also um, the dreams may not be as vivid as they once were. Of course, we know that comes from the various foods in which that we've been eating also. All right? Genetically modified organisms. I mean, if there's something on which that wasn't going on, would they have to result to genetically modified organisms, GMOs, which is part of their population control agenda? And I'm saying they because we know you're talking about the Bilderbergers, the Council on Foreign Relations. You're talking about the Trilateral Commission. You're talking about specifically the Rockefellers, the Rothschilds, the so-called 13 Illuminati blood families the richest families in the world who wants to dominate this planet. This is what we this is who we're talking about. All right. Um Brother Steve Coakley is the foremost expert when it comes to that information. All right. But what we're gonna go over right now is a little bit of the updates. Um, we spoke about how the earthquake went last week. We spoke about the earthquake, how it went through 12 states. Actually, we now moved up that information to 22 states. It was actually felt through 22 states collectively. Okay? So it was felt through 22 states. 
I mean, that is amazing. That is amazing. Of course, they're saying the reason why. Let's 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 let's, let's look at the reason why, and y'all can do your own research on this and see how plausible that information is. See if that information makes any sense to you. Um, it was saying that the reason why the hurricane, I mean, excuse me, the earthquake went through um, the various areas was because of the soft rock. That's what they were saying, according to geologists and um, seismologists. Okay? And that that is amazing to me that they would give such a simple answer um, for something in which that um, just a few years ago seemed so complex to them. But, I mean, it's no more than what they were saying about the um, aerosol um, cans with the um, monofluorocarbons, in which they supposedly depleted the, um, the ozone layer 30 years, um, 40 years ago. Okay, so, matter of fact, let me see if I can find the article. I'll read a little bit of it. Okay. Let me see. It says the magnitude 5.8 earthquake that struck central Virginia on Tuesday was a rare event for the East Coast, but not a surprising one, according to Mark Zabak, a professor of geophysics at Stanford. All right, so... Um, it says Stanford Geophysicist offers insight into the Virginia earthquake. Um, that's August the 25th, 2011. Um, get that article and see what he goes on further to say. I'm going to go into all of it here. Um, they have, I've seen another article in which that was very good. In which that dealt with some of that same information. Okay. It was talking about that goes into the article in which I was just staying actually when I was speaking about the soft ground or the soft rocks and supposedly we are on one Titanic um, plate. This is what is being said. Um, these 22 particular states. But um, there's been earthquakes in which that has occurred in South Carolina, in which that was not even felt in North Carolina. You know, so that is amazing. That this is a particular one coming from out of the central Virginia area uh, would have been able to do that to that magnitude to be felt throughout 22 states or 21 different uh, for the states. Um, it says there was at least four aftershocks registered after the Virginia quake. It says the um, the 5.8 magnitude earthquake today, um, which actually was Tuesday, that shocked people from Georgia to Canada, has produced at least four aftershocks. So it went all the way up into Canada. And this is what they're saying now. So actually it was from North Florida all the way up into Canada. That is, um, and as far as Kentucky and Ohio and others, in which that they actually, Pennsylvania, um, I wish they actually felt this um, up the um, eastern seaboard. And you can read this other article. It says, Officials Excess Damage After Rare Quake in Eastern United States. That is um, August 24, 2011. 
Um, the one at least four aftershocks registered after Virginia quake is August 24th, 2011. Once again. So, now we know um, we spoke about that there was an earthquake. Actually, it was two earthquakes in Colorado, in which that was measured um, 5.3. Um, the same day, and they were saying how that was rare, all right? It says right here, um, let me give you some more articles, strong east coast earthquake, highly unusual, scientists say. The, the strong earthquake that rattled the eastern United States on Tuesday was highly unusual in its severity, though it was centered in the part of Virginia known for small quakes, seismologist says. That's August the 24th, 2011. And then it says, why East Coast earthquake travels so far? A rare 5.9 earthquake that rattled the eastern United States on Tuesday was felt over a wide area from Toronto, Canada, down to Georgia. Actually, it was North Florida due to the hard Oh, excuse me, um, I said soft, it was hard. Hard, brittle quality of the ground, experts say. That, that's, that's, that's the experts. they saying that's the reason why. That's it. That was August the 23rd, uh, 2011. You know. Um, we just finished hearing, once again, the tape um, audio with um, Nick Baggage. And he was saying that the harp can be used to intensify or trigger um, earthquakes. Okay? Um, that's something that we can definitely check out, being that even according to the articles, it was so rare, you know, and so unusual, you know, of a thing. You know, I mean, I know I've been living 40 years, and um, this is something in which that hasn't been experienced in my 40 years. So um, what that means is, is that um, it's definitely unusual. It definitely is rare. But we can't specifically say or put our finger on if the harp did it, but we know According to what Nick Backus, Dr. Nick Backus says, that it has the ability in order to trigger, or to, um, or to um, increase the likelihood, or to move something on which that could be into being. All right. So once again, that goes back to what we were saying: whether modif- modification actually. Um, we wouldn't just say modification, we say manipulation. So those are some of the things in which that the articles were saying. Um, as far as the um, hurricane, we know that the hurricane came up and um, the whole East Coast into Canada once again. Okay. No, it went um, Bermuda, Puerto Rico, um, you know, we had uh, various information of how it moved. Um, it says West, Western Massachusetts continued to struggle with the Irene impact of this hurricane. Roads remained closed and thousands were still without power. All right, and that was... Um, today That was still today Alright Um It goes on Irene crew works to restore power And this is all the way in Quebec Montreal Says power clean up and search crews in eastern Canada resumed their effort Tuesday in the wake of 
a post-tropical storm Irene, which left thousands without electricity and resulted in the disappearance of a motorist of Montreal who's believed to have been swept into the Yamaska River. National Guard to airlift supplies to Vermont town cut off by Irene flooding. All right. Tropical storm. It says um, Irene slams New Jersey damage widespread. This is um, Tom River, New Jersey. Hurricane um, Irene swept along the New Jersey shore early on Sunday, knocking down trees, flooding streets, and leaving thousands of people without electrical power. This is August the 28th. And, of course, Tropical Storm Irene floods New York. Of course, Hurricane Irene was downgraded to a Tropical Storm Sunday morning as it made, um, made landfall in New, um, in New York, Coney Island, with winds clocking 65 miles an hour. Now, um, we sat here and watched Irene come in here in North Carolina in our particular part in which that the winds might have gotten up to maybe 50. But the majority of the time, the winds was no more than like 25 to maybe 35 miles an hour. So it seems as the winds um, got clocked up even higher as it went up. And, of course, that is something in which that is unusual. All right, Irene moves into New England. Millions in the dark, 18 dead. All right, says more than 4 million customers in 12 states and the District of Columbia uh, went without power. Now, our power didn't go off here in North Carolina. And this is where um, it um, hit landfall. Um, the second time, um, right here, I'm off of um, Wilmington, or right up, coming up from Wilmington into um, North Carolina. All right. But ultimately, they said that um, the power to more than 5 million homes and businesses um, caused one of the, um, and it surged up to the eastern seaboard over the weekend, caused one of the Worst electrical outages since 2003 Northeast blackout. So these are the things in which that is said to have taken place. You know, um, so gods, goddesses, you must use your mind. That is the magic wand in which they can keep you from out of any natural disaster because you will be in tune with Mother Nature. So hence, you won't have to worry about a disaster. So these are the um, keys in which that we are bringing and that you need. Real simple. And um, I see we got um, people who talking about their body is constantly buzzing. Um, the reason for that is because of the increase of the solar flare activity. As we said before, with 300,000 tons of stardust energy falls to the planet Earth daily. So what happens is that you as a melanated being, your melanocytes act as black holes in order to capture this light so that you can utilize it internally to re-energize your particular organs and endocrine glands. All right? In other words, the cells eat light. So hence you are a light vampire, unlike those who are dark vampires and who can't stand the light because the light destroys them. You, on the other hand, as a melanated being, you possess the dark, which is melanin, and you draw on the light. All right? So these are the sciences. All right? Um, we want to give a shout-out to um, Messiah and um, Diamond. Um, for the donations um, that went towards the Blog Talk Radio Show. We appreciate y'all. Um, we appreciate those who purchased the book, Brother James, Tahuti, 
Earl, um, Queen Mother Sugarfoot, Richard, Alicia, Boone, Knowledge, Latwine, um, Bertha, Sherman, um, Brother Carl, and all those who have, you know, invested, you know, time in us in order to, you know, help us do what we do. You know, because um, this takes a lot to get this information out, put our lives on the line for this, you know. I'm not dying for this. I'm living for this. You know, it's real simple, you know. Um, also, we want to give a shout-out to those um, who's doing their investment in CMI. You know, that's um, getting something of real substance with those CI notes. You know, Brother um, James, Brother Alchemy Nasir, you know, Brother Kemetu, Brother Sun Ra, you know what I'm saying, peace. You know, we want to give that shout-out. We don't normally do the shout-out, so, you know, we got to get it all there. Brother Kenneth, um, the info that you received, you know what I'm saying, um, it was received, and, you know, it was going out. You know what I'm saying? So, um, this is what we're doing. You know, we do many of things. You know, for those that don't know who Dr. Alim is, well, number one, the reason why I'm a doctor is because I have three doctrines. I have a doctrine of divinity, a doctrine of theology, and a doctrine of metaphysics. So for those airheads out there who keep trying to state that I don't have any credentials or that I'm not a doctor, well, I have certificates and degrees and diplomas to state otherwise. Okay? Um, I'm also a master herbalist. I have a degree in being a master herbalist. All right, um, as well as um, gra- a graduate of FSU, Federal State University in North Carolina, um, in sociology. So I'm also a sociologist. In other words, I can look at human behavior in order to gain clarity on whom I'm dealing with and the mentality of the individual. All right? I'm a former um, writer for Frontline Magazine. Shout-outs to Brother Marcus Klein, who's doing his thing there in Chicago. Um, He's teaching the youth. Y'all better get on YouTube and um, check out the Brother Marcus Klein because he is phenomenal when it comes to classroom curriculums. All right? So, this is what we're talking about. So, we're trying to definitely do things in which that promotes welfare, the best welfare of our people. Okay? Um, We're going to open the lines now for some questions, if there's any questions. Put your hands up, as we would say. (laughs) Or anything was that y'all want to discuss? Oh, okay. Well, we got one. Marcus Klein. That's K L I N E Klein. And um, you might have to reach him on Facebook. That's where you have to reach him at. Um, um, Malachi. Um, Malachi Love. Um, reach him on Facebook. Um, just put in Marcus Klein into the Facebook search, and he'll pull up. Hit him up there. He always answers me back when um um when I'm on there. All right. Any questions about anything that we're going over? All right. Well, what we're going to talk about now? Let's get into some more of these earth changes and the things in which that is supposed to be taking place. Because I'm not so much into the scare and doom, you know, scenarios any longer, even though they might happen, you know, because in a sense we are drawing them and because we have not yet learned how to use our minds to manipulate this Maya or this matrix as of yet. All right? But because we have not done so, 
and we are just waking up to doing so. See, we got to understand is that if you read the Willie Lynch speech, it says this spell will last 300 years to 1,000. But we're part of the first ones to break that spell because supposedly that speech was written in 1712. Then 1712 plus 300 is 2012. So regardless of, as people say, the Olmec or Mayan calendar being accurate or um, or our calendar being, uh, well, which that is accurate, our calendar being off, or the Illuminati um, attempting to manipulate it, and so that they got us looking at December 21st, 2012, um, which is doing the solstice, and not, and we're not focused on what's coming in um, a month or so down the pike. Whatever the case is, regardless of what is being stated, your mind, your free will, have the ability in order to change all things. Okay? And we have to work on our power of the mind on a daily basis. The more energy that we can absorb, the more power we have. The more energy that we can store, the more power we have. All right? This is what Africans and or the indigenous people all over the world knew and understood. This is why they participated in the dance to excite the spirits during rituals and ceremonies. And they were able to control what? The weather. They were able to control um, um, if it rained or when it rained to bring the sun out through their sun dance. They knew all of this. We have forgotten it because we have become further and further removed from nature. And this was purposely done because, as Count Varney would say, um, he stated that it is a shame that the same people who built the pyramids are the same ones who were enslaved. So that's deep. That is real deep. In other words, within your genetic coding is the greatness in which they built the pyramids, in which that they are now contributing to aliens, which the Dogon and the Amazulu people, which means the Sky people, um, the people of Africa, the indigenous tribes of Africa, states that we are the aliens or extraterrestrials, extra terror. Astral, extra, terra, earth, astral energy, star. Star energy on earth. In abundance of it, extra of it. So they gave you a key to that term, extraterrestrial. It's not something just outside. It's something in which that comes to earth in an extra amount of it, which is star energy, stardust. These star particles Scientists say that your physical body is composed of stardust particles. Your melanin is dark matter. Your melanocytes act as black holes in order to absorb the stardust energy. In Qigong and Tai Chi, you store the energy into your navel chakra, what's called your dantian. Some say it's about an inch to three inches below the navel chakra in the sperm palace or ovarian palace. But regardless, that's talking about your area of DNA manufacturing, your blood supply, and your skeleton system. That's what that energy builds on, your foundation. It produces harmonious balance. You can also store energy at the back of the heart, or at the third eye area. For longevity, it's stored at the navel chakra. For love, the expansion of love, is stored at the back of the heart. For intelligence, it's stored at the pineal gland or at the third eye. So this is what this information deals with. You know, this is this is what is going on. So the more you learn how to store this energy and this major energy coming in right now, people are saying that their body, their whole body is buzzing. This is because you're being upgraded. Your DNA is being changed. 
You become the homos Christos. You become the heroes of the planet. The heroes of the planet. Oh, your mortgage payment is stored with the company in which that you got the contract with. In which that, um, when we talk about the contracts, that's a whole other story. We've done shows on that. Go back into, um, into the archives. Right now we're dealing with the spiritual connection in nature. But um, for the contracts, go back and um, go into the archives. We break down the contracts and the situation and how to eliminate mortgage debt and all of that. A lot of things that you need to do in order to master that part too. It ain't no walking in park. It ain't just going to happen like some of the New Ages say. Whether you're dealing with the physical or you're dealing with the spiritual, it's not just going to happen. You have to do some work. Has to be some changes. Okay. So um, we got a question. It says. says, when you look into your pineal gland, do you see angels or demons, depending on your mind state? Um, well, depending on if you see angels or demons, period. You might not see a particular form or concept in which that we've been taught as far as an angel or a demon. Because supposedly angels and demons, according to the movies that we have seen, have wings. All right? The dark or fallen angels or the demons. Those who are ascended back to God and who is in heaven are the core of the angels. The angels are the seraphims. The demons are the cherubims. Supposedly 300 cherubims out of the 600, which is two-thirds of um, the heavenly hosts of the cherubims left with Iblis or Lucifer or Satan as they refer to them as. But when you look at it metaphysically, the cherubims are the cer- cerebrums, the two portions of the brain, which are the coverings for the pineal gland, which is the throne of God, the seat of the Lamb. And the 24 elders that sit around it are the 12 pericranial nerves. Those are the 24 elders around the throne of God who worship God day and night. The seraphims is the Eda and the Pingala and the Shoshuna, which is the serpents in which that goes in the crisscross pattern up the spinal column and then the hollow area in the, in the um, back. Where the Kundalini goes up into, which is called the serpentine fire, hence the seraphim, or sepha, and then the seraphim being with the activation of the Eda and the Pingala, the two sacral nerves. And then there's 31 nerves inside of there. So 31 plus 2 gives you 33, and then that must raise through the 33 vertebrates. Hence, the 33 degrees in Freemasonry. I wish that they um, do their rituals and degree work through, which is called the craft. And why it's called the craft is because you will be able to craft what you want into existence once you reach those particular levels, once you become a sovereign inspector general or a sovereign grand commander. That means once the Kundalini energy enters into the brain area to create that enlightenment, that nirvana, that Buddha consciousness, that Christ consciousness, Hebrew consciousness. This is what this is really talking about. All right. So, yes, um, there's also masculine and feminine polarities. The Eda is uh, feminine, the Pingala is masculine. The Eda is magnetic. The Pingala is 
um, electrical. All right, so in that sense, that's what the polarity symbolizes. And those two nerves go up to and are activated by the left and right nostril. So when you do the alternating nostril breath technique, in which that we have gone over before, you breathe in for a count of six, hold it for 16, switch the nostrils and let out for a count of eight, and then go back and forth doing that. What happens is that you activate the Eden and the Pingala, and you also create a synergy, which is a balance between the left and the right hemisphere of the brain. So this is what is going on. So you need to do this more and more every day with these energies coming in in order to master yourself, to be able to um, become the most powerful being that you can become. All right? Um, I suggest that you go and do some research on um, light beings or plasma beings or what is called ethereans, beings in which they emit um, emits um, large amounts of light in which that you can actually see and feel. All right? This is what is going on now in relationship to our physical body. This is what you are in the beginning stages of becoming. This is why we're moving to the fifth dimension, which deals with energy, because you are becoming an Ethereum or a light being. In the beginning stages, you still have the physical body until you can encapsulate enough light to be able to make that transition. Your auric field is, is being witness to that fact. The auric field has been measured by science using the Kirlian photography on flash. They've been able to see the energy pulsating from the body, whether it's from a finger or whether it's from the whole body itself. The auric field produces many colors. The color which that you wanted to emit the most of is the gold color. So you want to be able to visualize and imagine yourself being encapsulated with gold light in and around your body. This alone um, raises your vibration rate or your vibratory rate, your frequencies. Um, it seals the holes within the aura so there's no leaks and holes in the auric cell so hence there is no diseases it cures um, it heals diseases in which that you might have so whether it's high blood pressure diabetes even AIDS by the visualization and intensity of it it can destroy any negative um, experience um, disease wise in the body just through that visualization technique and the more emotion that you put towards it, the greater the chances of defeating the ailment. The weakened the ailment becomes in the physical body, the greater the cells oscillate, which must oscillate between 70 to 100 hertz. If the cells go below um, 60 um, hertz, Actually, 62 hertz, you go into a state of disease. And if it falls any lower than that, then um, you have problems as far as being able to um, change that particular state if you're not practicing these particular techniques that we're, or methods in which that we're talking about. Okay? So um, these are just some of the things that we um, definitely... Um, need to have understanding of, because this is what, um, as Rakim Allah was just saying, holy are you, okay? That, that, that is part of the um, goal, all 
All right, so, um, all right, we have a question. Call at 904, beginning with 904. You're on the line. Nine oh four. Oh, okay, my bad. <laughs> Greetings, um, uh, no, I'm not trying to get off the subject. Uh, Is that right? But um, surfing the internet, and I seen what some guy got mad at the government and let out that they they know how to put robot eyes inside a human being, and the guy can see now. Some, uh, yeah, artificial eyes that he can actually see. So oh, yeah, just, well, everything else that they have is based on technology of the replica of the human body. So whether it's talking about the TV or computer, which is based on the visualization or methods of the mind, you know, um, the way that um, computers are able to input, output, download, upload, that is the that is the same replica of the, as the mind. They, everything that they're doing is to replica the um, human body, but in an artificial manner. But um, if you want, you can give out that um, YouTube clip or um, or wherever you found to that um, for the audience. Wow, they were saying that he could actually see the body and. I know China, uh, a little while back, built a whole human being, and the, and the thing, a woman, it actually looks real. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Like a human. I feel like these are weapons. Oh, I'm pretty sure it will eventually um, come to that because the majority of the scientific research is done by via the military, as we have already shown and seen in the movies anyway. You know, so... Um, the military is always the ones, just like we were talking about the harp tonight. The harp is used or we started, you know, from via the technology of Nikola Tesla. Um, you know, we have taken it, and the Navy and the Air Force are the ones that is propagating, you know, the harp system. So the military is always backing scientific discoveries and invention. You know, some of that $6 million man. Um, six million dollar women, um, type of um stuff that we used to see back in the seventies, you know, in the eighties. If you know, you're old enough to remember that. Okay. Well, I thank you so much, PC. With you, I just because of you, I'm becoming so conscious. It's just ridiculous how I see stuff now in a whole other light. And, uh, oh well, thank you for listening. You know, so we're happy that um we're able to enlighten others. And I'll bring them to the um to this information. Oh yeah, um, I'm I'm working. I'm definitely working on it. Um, you should be getting more and more callers from Jacksonville, Florida. Okay. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. Peace. All right. Um, we're gonna be dealing with um some more info here. Um, like, there are natural things in which that are occurring based on the solar flare activity. Now, we told you about the solar flare activity last week, in which that I've been talking about it for nearly 20 years, you know, ever since I was living in Atlanta back in 95, 94, you know. So, you know, so we're talking about a long time of talking about solar flare activity, you know, um, because during that time period, I'm doing the time of the Hellbop coming, which came in '95, going into um, '96. There was solar flare activity bombarding the planet Earth at that time, in which that supposedly is supposed to happen every 11 years. Every 11 to 22 years, it's supposed to take place with this increase of solar flare activity. However, what we have noticed is that the increase of the solar flare activity has not decreased from that time to now. It is increasing. So this is the thing in which that scientists are not um, telling us, um, at least at on a large scale. However, and as even the scientist says, astrophysicists, quantum physicists, uh, meteor 
Kaku, he states specifically that by 2012. So regardless on what they have told us, these things are taking place now, all right? And this is what they are afraid of. This is their fear. Remember, their technology, we're just talking about, the sister just finished telling me about the, um, the individual being um, having an eye to see um, or that Japanese scientists have put together a whole um, robotic um, body. None of that shit is going to work when he sold the flare's head. And even as he stated, it would be down for months, even years. Transformers would be fr- um, transformers would be fried. It means we wouldn't even have any electricity. It would go back to the damn um, shit, damn near the Stone Ages. So that means if these things take place, real simple. What you need um, to have, um, as far as communication. You know, you might need a ham radio or a portable um, turning radio. You know, um, for those who listen to Coast to Coast, um, they were selling these types of radios um, for a while now, advertising those type of radios for a while now. You know, um, that might be the only means of communication besides for telepathy to mind. You know, you know, um, you know, so, but as far as, like, the normal information, as far as means as TV, computers, um, cell phones, those types of things, I'm going. It would be dead for, like he said, months, even possibly years. And this is what they fear. This is the reason why they're doing what they're doing. All right? Is definitely, um, yeah, you're right. Telepathy um, should be easier then, no doubt about it, because we want to have um, um, the ELF, uh, which is called um, electro, uh, or extremely low fields messing with us, you know. Um, yeah, so I ride, no doubt. In the Adam family, um, Uncle Fester had a book in his hand, and the book, actually had Hurricane Irene on it. Yeah, that, that, I mean, we definitely, yeah, that, that was a hell of a clip. Because they actually zoomed in on Hurricane Irene. Okay? So, I mean, that 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 is that is phenomenal. You know, so and now, when was that done? You know that movie was made back in 1991. Okay, that was made back in 1991. All right, um, let me see. If we got some other comments here in which that you need to comment to, um, brother Eugene. Peace, brother Eugene. Um, he says, um, that's brother um, Amin Hotep El Bay. Um, his um, his indigenous appellation. Uh, he says that it is true that America hit Japan with the earthquake because Japan was on the verge of releasing a magnetic motor. Okay. Um, so, um, oh, the question was, what is a magnetic motor? And somebody else said, interesting, Eugene. So, um, Brother Eugene, um, come on the line if you can. And um, talk to the people about it if you um, if you need to. Come on and um, hit the question. Hit number one, I think, on your um, keypad and come on on. Because um, and the calling number is six two six four one four three five three five. I'm calling specifically Brother Eugene because he's gonna have the bill on that. He ain't gonna be going into the chat room and just and just um, dropping science and um, and the people ain't gonna get that joint. And they asked some questions about it. So come on. And um, Brother Eugene, we're calling you. Come on. Um, so hopefully you'll call in in a few seconds here, a few minutes. All right. And also, um, the largest debt um, is owned by China and Japan of the debt notes, which is the fiat notes, as we would say. Um, China and Japan wants to call in the debt. 
all right? Um, they had a commercial out. You can go on YouTube and look up the commercial. It was on TV last year. However, they took it off. They banned it. In which that there was a um, scientist or an economics, um, or economist, as we would say, and he had a classroom full of students, but they was all Chinese, you know, or Asian. And he was joking about, you know, how we own the United States. So, I mean, this is, you know, in their commercials now. So they're joking us. Okay? And, yes, um, they want to pay off. Um, they want um, the debt. They want their monies for the debt. But what are they using as the debt notes? It is your birth certificates. See, I'm going to have to end up getting on this anyway, so I guess we might as well just get into it. All right. At birth, the average birth certificate is worth a million dollars based on your size and weight. So if you're between 5 to 10 pounds, um, between 650000 to $1 million or more is how much that birth certificate is worth. All right. In other words, you're worth your weight in gold. Now, what happens is, is that when that debt note matures, when you turn 18, it is then put on the open market through what is called DTC, which is Depository Trust Company or the Depository um, Trust Corporation, all right? And when it goes online, it goes into the stock market, all right, and the subsidiary companies of the DTC. The stock market now have you, your birth certificate, your name's about to know cats, your straw man, your artificial corporation, up for sale. And they bundle all of the information, you know, hence the bonds together. Corporations, countries purchase these bonds. You can actually go to www.fidelity.com and get sign up for an account and look up your bond information, you can put in your birth certificate file number or your Social Security card number on the front or the number on the back, which is part of the 12 Federal Reserve Banks. That's why it starts with the letter A through the letter L, which is 12 of them, Federal Reserve Banks, plus the uh, main century one, which is the Federal Reserve Bank, which is owned by the 8 to 12 uh, families in which that makes up the policies um, within the World Bank and the IMF, actually. All of that is basically merged together, okay? Now, so this is what they're actually up to, okay? This is actually what they're up to, you know? So the agents was about to call in the debt because the United States owed them, and so in order to stop that from happening, they created the um, disaster or the earthquake in um, Japan as a sign in order to, because, you know, Japan actually, in a sense, owns um, China, and China is used as their military base, or as their military, all right? Now, you've got to go and look that information up, just like the United States is owned by Great Britain, okay? Once you look that up, you'll find that too. Matter of fact, the Queen of England owns the Social Security Administration. That number on the back, which is part of those Federal Reserve Banks, is the IMF number also, which is also called your prepaid levy bond number. And we said if you knew how to utilize those documents, you can activate your UCC trust account in order to discharge debt and set off and set for value. Okay, so... These are the things that we have to come into um, knowledge of, all right? Um, I love speaking about the spiritual aspect of information, you know, but there's also a real physical aspect of information, and we have to balance it out. So it's just that simple, all right? Um, We got another question, beginning with 302. 302, you're on the line. Please, brother, this is Bob Messiah. Please, brother, how you doing? I'm all right. Appreciate the shout out. Oh yeah, yeah, no um, doubt. <laughs> yeah, I wanted to uh, ask you because um, on your Constitution DVD, you were stating that uh, you could bond out on a right. charge with your yeah. Social Security number. Would you have to yeah. put that together like the same way you would do, uh, you know, the, the bond for the ch- 
chargeback process? Yes. Um, matter of fact, what you would do, you have to open your, you have to open and activate your UCC trust account, which is through the United States Secretary of Treasury, which is right now Timothy Geithner, and his affiliation through Puerto Rico, the IRS slash um, one. You know what I'm saying? Um, who is? If you look on the dollar bill, look look on the dollar bill, and you see. United States Secretary of Treasury and the Treasury of the United States. Mm-hmm. So the Treasury of the United States is in Puerto Rico. Yeah. Okay? So you tell Timothy Geithner to activate your UC trust account, which that opens up the private side for you, which is this is what Obama keeps talking about. He's going to open up the private sector. Every time you hear him right. talk about that, they don't never explain what the private sector is. But that's what the private sector is for. You can do private banking. But you can't do that until you open an active your UCC trust account because what are you going to use? Because right now, since the House Joint Resolution of 1933 or 192, well, excuse me, it's House Joint Resolution 192 of 1933, um, ever since the gold standard is no longer backed by, you know, you know, there's no gold certificates or silver certificates since 72, since there's no gold and silver certificates any longer on the market, then that means that the fiat notes is only worth two cents, which is what is what is printed, you know, what is worth the print. Whether it's one dollar, five dollars, twenty dollars, a hundred dollars, that's it. Two dollars. Mm-hmm. So you have to open an act which you see your trust account. So um you have to do your um copyright trademark trade name, your security agreement, private agreement, whole harmless indemnity clause with your collateral listing of all your property and assets. You have to do a grant and power of attorney in which that transfers the assets from the straw man's name, which is in all caps, which they which is the slave that they have on the stock market. Hence the reason why it's called the stock market, just like um back in the days when they had us on the stocks, you know, on the market and we it was auctioning us off. I'm saying this big old buck he's going for you know, one thousand dollars corner, whoever got the one thousand dollars is going to get so to the man in the back there for one thousand dollars. Yeah, um in other words, um check his teeth, check his ass, make sure um his knees and everything is all right, because this slave is coming home with me. Well what they have done is transfer that shit to paper. And then they make you, your physical body, pay for the charges if you accept them in church in um in court. I said I said church, but court and church is the same thing. That's another um, science. That's why um, um, he's called a reverend to collect revenue. Uh, hence, that's what the judge is in court to collect revenue. He's a banker administrator or bank administrator. Bankrupt as it is, that's what he's still doing in there. Okay? So um, you need um, the bond for discharge, you need the charge back. You need negotiable um, private bond set off. You need a um, um, silver bond certificate, which is actually backed by 22 pieces of silver. Okay, mm-hmm. um, according to the Constitution, it says at least 20 pieces, something of substance. Um, so you need all of these things in order to open and activate your UCC trust account. So yeah. you're using that silver bond certificate as something of real substance to open on the private side. Okay? And that, Even though the silver stay with you. The silver stay with you. The silver isn't going to the bankrupts the bankruptcy. <laughs> okay? Mm-hmm. So that's how you open up your U C C trust account. Once you had that open then you can begin to use the IRS forms 1099A, 1099B, 1099C. 1099C is a cancellation of debt form. 1099A is abandonment form, which the banks use. If you close an account and there's money that still is in there, they'll claim it, um, and they still make money off of it on the private side. All right? Um, Also, a 1099B is a balance form. So actually, 1099A is for fiat notes. 1099B changed it to credit. Excuse me, they changed the credit. Excuse me, the credit to fiat, so that you can actually um, 
went from something from just credit to fiat. So that is what those IRS forms are for. So you have to master those IRS forms. Um, also, optional form 90, which is release on lien on real pro- on, 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 on real pro- on um, real property, and then 1090 um, 10 optional form 91, which is release of um, personal property from escrow, and a standard form 28, in which that is an affidavit of individual surety. On your UCC one financial statement, you have to take everything that is in the debtor's name, which is your name spelled in all caps, and transform it over to your indigenous appellation. Your indigenous appellation do not have a birth certificate um, attached to it. So you're not under any contract, all right, regardless of what you might hear in the community, they are incorrect. All right? There is no birth certificate attached to your indigenous name. That means you are now free to operate in commerce, especially on the private side. Right. In order to discharge your debts, to do a set off, to do um a set for value. A for V. This is what this is all talking about. Okay? So, um, yeah, um um we, we need a, um all of us need to learn um these particular sciences, you know what I'm saying? Because um we survived these um, disasters, you know, um, we don't have to worry about, you know, um, anyone trying to come and put us in concentration camps, dead of prisons, or anything else, because we have the um, documentation in order to show otherwise, you know. And then, of course, you want the first major thing that you want is your nationality. You want your nationality on public record to be known publicly so that when you do business, you can do it privately, if you so choose to, public and private. But you can't do it privately until you put your information on the public record, which you have to go to the um, county register, which is called the Register of Deeds, or the county recorder, which is Register of Deeds, and have your um, nationality um, paperwork filed there, your citizenship paperwork filed there, because you're not a citizen according to the United States. Um, the 14th Amendment was never fully ratified, nor um, did they ever strike down or change or, um, you know, the so-called, you know, a, you know, uh, what's the name of the Dress Scott case decision. In the Dress Scott case, it says that you're not a U.S. citizen and you would never be as a descendant from Africans or a Negro. Okay? So these are the things in which that we have to rectify. And no one else can actually do it for us. We have to do enough research and study. You know what I'm saying? In other words, we, the European Albion is not going to do it for us. We have to do it ourselves. You know, so that's the most important thing is first, nationality. Two, um, the science of commerce and trade. More so the nationality. But, you know, if these things happen the way in which that um, has been prophesied, as far as also speculated even by NASA and the scientists, then um, a lot of this stuff we won't even have to worry about. I'm here soon. You know, it all depends on the way in which that um, we're going to perceive it. As I said earlier, you know, the um, mind's eye, you know, which is the mind itself, is the um, magic wand. You know, we can um, form, you know, what we want into, you know, into destiny, into creation. You know? Mm-hmm. All right, I. That's peace. You had any more questions? Um, yeah, well, nah. Nah, that's, that's peace right there. But, um, you know, for the most part, I got all of those documents completed already. Oh, yeah, I do got one more question. What if you mm-hmm. go to a court and you attempt to file something and they don't want to do it, even though you got, um, the, you know, the, 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 the Crandall versus the state of Nevada, you know, um, or even a, a, a um, poverty affidavit, and you're trying to file them, and they're either trying to charge you to file them or just not file them at all. <laughs> yeah, well, you have to do uh, what's called a, um, a form of papyrus or what is called an um, indigent form in which they, um, they have their behind the counter. They just don't want to give it to you. Mm-hmm. You know, but um, you have to ask them for that particular form and just fill out the indigent form, in which they're basically just saying, I don't got no money, which just could mean you ain't got no money on you right then. You know, 
But whatever the case is, you just fill it out, fill out the information, and um, their obligation is to go on and file out that information. All right. Mm-hmm. It's, it's good. It's good to use theirs, or um, is it better to use your own? Um, you can ask them for theirs. If they claim that they don't have it, then whip yours out. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah. yeah. All right. Peace out. All right. Peace. All right. We got caller 916. Caller 916, you on the line. Okay. Is that me? Yes, it is. Peace out. Oh, peace out, guys. How's everything? Good, good. Yeah, I've been... uh. Yeah, what the brother was saying, yeah, I've been kind of going through those things because, uh, you know, I sent all my paperwork off, you know, non, uh, non-negotiable non chargeback, all this stuff. To, uh, and uh, they they already sent me a letter, you know, and then but they sent me a uh, kind of like a blank voucher. had, like, my routing number at the bottom and my Social Security number out the dashes. What I did is I went and set this for value and sent it back, uh, but I sent it to the IRS. And uh, I, didn't, I haven't received anything back from them since. You know, they sent me like a four-page letter saying uh, all this stuff you sent is frivolous. If you send us anything else, we're not going to respond. And because we don't respond, that doesn't mean that, you know, uh, we're agreeing to what you're saying. So they kind of threw all this stuff in there trying to protect themselves. But the voucher that they did send me, um, <clears throat> I did accept it for value. I accepted a letter for value, put a stamp at the bottom, uh, and, and endorsed it and stuff like that, sent it back, and I haven't heard from them. I haven't heard from them since. And, uh, okay. yeah, so I was just kind of, you know, kind of figuring out what's the next move on that. Um, I mean, do you want to contact them? Um, I mean, if you haven't well, heard any word back, then you might just want to wait to see. Um, did you put the stipulation on, like, how many days did they have in order to respond? Uh, yeah, I did. I gave them, I gave them 30 days. And you sent uh, them a notice? The, oh. Yeah, yeah, I sent the, and I, and I, and I had sent a notary presentment, which had, like, a bunch of other things attached to right. that, 450, with the 456, and, mm-hmm. uh, what else did I send? Um, well, you sent the fiduciary this, relationship form. Yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. that's for them to sign. I didn't sign it. I've, I've left it blank for them to right. sign. Did you, did you send the appointment letter with it? Um, the appointment of fiduciary. Right. Uh, I sent I sent a letter. I mean, I sent the okay. the form fifty six forms. Uh, right, the form but the letter along enough. with the fifty six. Say that again. I was saying, did you send the form along with the um send the letter? All with the four fifty six. Yeah, exactly. Okay, got you. Okay. And then what I did is I sent it again, and then right. um, <clears throat> uh, so and what I what I've been doing I've been using kind of the postal technology of uh, you know sending you know sending sending letters you know with the with the three cent stamp actually endorsed over the you know endorsing it you know at that forty five degree angle. They sent it back and said this is not the right postage, whatever. So I gave them the right postage and sent it back to them. They didn't send it back, but then they did not respond because what I did is I also sent a, uh, a Form 56, not just for the Treasury, but also for the commissioner, the IRS commissioner, as well as the guy who the other guy I sent it to, um, Russell George. Right. Uh, I sent, yeah, I sent those three off too as well. And uh, still haven't gotten any replies back. And, All um, right. So you sent so you sent the form to Russell George. You sent the form to um, Donald Schuler, Schulman. Yeah, Schulman. Yeah. Right. Okay. And to uh, Timothy and to Timothy uh, Geithner. Right. Okay. Well, if you haven't gotten anything back yet, then um, you've done everything. I can. I, I only thing I can tell you just wait in order to see what um, transpires as far as um, their reaction to it. You know, I mean, now, you've done everything, you know. Yeah, because it, it's been about, I think it's been about six months now. And um, right. I was trying to figure out, like, you know, what, you know, a, a specific number to call to actually get, because when I call the IRS, like, the 800 number or something like that, they don't, 
uh, either they act like they don't know what I'm talking about, or they just like we don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's a little bit of both. <laughs> right. Well, some of them don't know what, they, what you're talking about, and then some who do is going to tell you that they don't know what they do, what you're talking about. So, um, in both regards, that's what you're going to get out. But um, you know, just keep pushing it. You know, what I mean, doing your thing. I mean, um, if you need to, just write another letter. You know, you yeah, might not be able to get yeah. through um, on the phone, so you might just have to write another letter. Yeah, exactly. And I, I guess I, I don't have to play. Maybe I should just all just, I should just probably just send them register mail from here on out, right? Don't even play with that posting technology, so that way they don't try to find a loophole to bounce to jump out of it. Right. Well, right now what they've been doing is trying not to um, abide by the information because um, number one, so many people have found out about it. Right. You know, so um, it's happening too quick of a time. Um, they got China pull on them. They collect the note on um, the deck. You know what I'm saying? And here we are alleviating ourselves from the deck so they don't have nobody to blame it on. So what you think they're going to do? Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I had, I had, yeah. I, I, I know what you're saying. So basically, what you know, basically, I just need to just stay on them. So at least I just got the documentation because I know it's like after ninety, after ninety-one days, it's law, right? If they don't right. reply, and if you keep responding, you get another thirty day, the thirty day, and the other thirty day. On that ninety-first day, it's law. Now they can't, they can't really say anything. Exactly. Okay. Well, I just, I wasn't too sure about. It. I kind of. Heard about it through the whim, you know. I'm, I got, I'm in the nine one. I got nine one six area code, but I'm in L A. So I, I do converse with a lot of, a lot of Moors and a lot of uh, Orthodox Muslims that, that are, you know, that that kind of talk about a lot of these different things. And um, I just wanted to ask you, kind of, uh, another question about that ten ninety nine O I D, because I've been talking to a lot of people, and it's like people are kind of like really don't like holding this information for ransom or they really don't know anything about it, trying to discuss it, I'm trying to figure this thing out because it that's, seems that's like... That's what you forgot, Doc. Um, order your 1099 OID from the IRS, you know, is a form. Um, what you want to do is just take all your credit um, card information. If you use a credit card or if you um, have um, rent that you have paid or um, that you something that you're leasing, something in which that you have, um, even if you paid your mortgage, you want to keep those receipts. You want to keep every transaction in which that you've done credit-wise. Um, if you've done a debit, you know, debit is you take the eye out, you got debt. So you don't want to do debit. You want to do credit. So if you've done your credit and you got any information from your credit over the past year, um, the right. times in order to do it is during the month of October through March. Right. Right. Um, if what is the end? Uh, what what is the end on your social security number? Uh, you talking about the last four digits? No, just the last digit. Oh, three. Okay. Um, put it this way: if you have a nine, then those are the ones who I've seen the 1099 OID process work. They have gotten back thousands and thousands of dollars, and everyone right. that I've talked to. That has um that um that it has worked for had um a nine um at the end of their social security number. Ah, uh, what's all that about? <laughs> and it's a code. Um, we need to do more research about it, but that's what I found out um thus far over the last three years. Um, so um that that's basically what you would do. So you take the 1099 OID form, um, you put in all your credit information, everything that you have purchased over the past year. Um, you know, every restaurant that you've gone to, wherever you have done, um, and you, um, you know, um, tally all that information up, and they're supposed to be you as the original issuer of um, discount or of that debt. They're supposed to, the bank do what's called fractionalized banking, and so they mark it up ten times um, what, you know, what you have actually put out. That's that's actually what it's called. That's part of inflation. But the banks do that. It's sexualized banking. They mark it up ten times the value. So you, as the original issue of the debt, they're supposed to give you back, you know, everything was that you spent out over that year. Right. right. This is how the rich. This is how the rich stay richer. That's right. You know what I'm saying? Right. And why the poor stay right. poor is because they don't know the concept. Right. Okay. But it, it, it's definitely you definitely can't use it 
to go in and purchase houses or anything like that or purchase or go on the car lot and do any of that type of thing, right? Can't be done. Yeah, after, you get, after you get your um, the, um, after you get um, your check from the IRS, why not? Yeah, you can. Okay, that's what's up. Okay, so that's that's all that needs to be done. And that in that sense, the 1040 annual that has nothing to do with it, or the 1040V and the 1096, all those things work together. And yeah, all those things um can be done. You talking about the voucher, um, 10, yeah. 1040 voucher? Um, yes, the, um, that can be used. Um, as far as um, the account, you know, the account of everything was that you were spent out, it, that can be used. The 1056 um, can be used. Um, it, it depends on the way in which that you do it. There's several ways that you can do a 1099 OID. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I can't get into everything right now because, number one, I only got one minute left. Yeah, it's expensive. Yeah, um, sorry about that. Before the show ends. And then, number two, you know what I'm saying, um, I've already probably lost a lot of people from not knowing uh, what we're talking about already. <laughs> okay. Well, so if you want, you can call me at my number, 252 257 3588. 252 257 3588. Are you call. in Southern California? No, nah, I'm, um, I'm in North Carolina. Okay, okay. 252 257 3588. Yes, that's it. All right, brother. Thank you. All right, peace. All right, peace. All right. Um, um, everybody, y'all can contact me if you need to. Facebook, Alina Bay. That's A L I M E L B E Y. Um, MySpace. I'm on um Alina Bay. Um, then if you're trying to friend me, then I got another account on Facebook because I got over 5,000 on the other one, and that is Eileen L. Hyphen Bay. Make sure you have the hyphen in there. So that's Eileen L. Hyphen Bay. That's what you can friend me at on, on Facebook. All right. Um, go to our website, www.cultural-freedom.com. That's C-U-L-T-U-R-A-L-Freedom.com. All right. So um, hit us up. Hit us up there. All right. Um, then, you know, if you need to, um, we got another website. Actually, two more. We got www.freewebs with a s dot com. Right slash rock car r a k a right slash. Um, you can hit us up there. That's our um Hill and Wings website in which that we deal with um the healing aspects of um this information as we was going into a little bit tonight. Um, for those who want more information on um, the information that we just finished talking about on um, the birth certificates and on that type of information as far as also on um, your birth rights, on your nationality, citizenship, they hit us up at the cultural-freedom. As well as also you can purchase my book, First World Order, from there. Um, also, you can just give me a call. The number is out, 252-257-3588. I have... Um, um, other books, you know, other information that goes in more deeper um, detail than what we can ever get online or what we can do over the phone or do or here on the radio. All right, so um, give us a call, contact us, all right? All right, um, and I'm going to say um, peace out. First World Order Radio, finally, finally, we are on the air, no doubt. All right, all right. There's always going to be somebody in the building on First World Order Radio. We get on into some of that order consciousness tonight. First World Order Radio, every Wednesday, 8 p.m. We got to talk about what is taking place on the planet. There's always going to be somebody in the building on First World Order Radio. First, we need to let you know we're going to be doing more shows, giving out more information on Wednesdays. Wednesday at 8 o'clock, we are now going to make this the hottest day of the week. 
seen in others in time, order, importance. The most prominent parts, voices, or instruments. Earthly state of human concerns and existence. An indefinite multitude, quantity, or distance. System regulates to bring about specifics in the group based on value and natural characteristics. Current radiates electromagnetistics of sound through the air, same as your thoughts transmits it. Earth. The seen in others in time, order, importance. The most prominent parts, voices, or instruments. Earth. Earthly state of human concerns and existence. An indefinite multitude, quantity, or distance. Order. System regulates to bring about specifics in the group based on value and natural characteristics. Current radiates electromagnetistics of sound through the air, same as your thoughts transmits it. You need to understand how magical this is, uh, something like this every Wednesday can become. So you need to start uh, getting your calendar right, get your schedule, your schedule right. You need to know our intention straight out. All right, so I mean, these clues are given throughout the various languages was to piece the puzzle of the ancient mystery school back together again. And what we plan on doing, both of us, is bringing y'all some surefire dynamite. We're going to take this level up a notch. We're going to have stuff to do here. This is not just going to be about philosophies and theories and shit that works. <laughs>